Hey, Ed here from Precision Gun Reviews, and we are back once again with another gun review. This time we're taking a look at, finally, the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. This is a single stack 9mm with a polymer frame, striker fired, and it holds 7 plus 1 rounds in the magazine, and 8 plus 1 with the extended base plate. Let's take a look at it. So this gun is the venerable go-to among single stack carry options. This is probably the most popular of all single stack 9mm and we'll see why. It's 6.1 inches long, it is 4.6 inches tall, it is 0.9 of an inch in width, and it weighs about 19 ounces. As I said, it carries 7 plus 1 or 8 plus 1 in these interesting semi-single stack mags, they give those rounds a little bit of play in order to make room for more rounds. And this Smith & Wesson M&P Shield is essentially a shrunken down version of the M&P. Obviously it's a single stack, it's thinner, but it functions in almost entirely the same way. The trigger is almost exactly the same. You can see there's a little bit of difference there. It's sort of a more robust trigger than in the full-size guns. It's, it's wider and a little bit chunkier. Um, it has the same takedown process, same controls, same mag release, same slide release. It's not ambidextrous, however, unlike the main M&P line. It has similar grip texturing. It does not have removable or replaceable back straps or palm swells. There is no magazine safety, so you can pull the trigger. We can take a look at that trigger right now. Here's a reset on it. Audible, tactile. So this was the first improvement to the M&P trigger that had no tactile or audible reset. Um, it has since been added in the newer M&P 2.0 and in all the other M&Ps produced after those earlier runs. But this is the one that sort of started that path for Smith & Wesson in response to all the outcry for that audible and tactile reset. So this is a small gun. It's a 4.6 inch tall gun, which makes it slightly taller than the M&P Compact, but it gives you a reasonable amount of grip here. I could almost get my pinky on there. Um, it's sort of neither here nor there, however, for me in particular. Uh, I would say I have sort of medium hands, honestly, but for those of you who have hands of this size, this little bit is useless. You're going to end up having that finger tucked under anyway, so maybe that's not necessary. And of course, this is the, the dimension that prints. That's why I say that that little bit could potentially make a difference, but it doesn't bother me. Like this is a, this is a solid gun. It's a good size for a small firearm at 4.6 inches tall and 6.1 inches long, it gives you a nice hand feel in terms of, you know, filling out the hand and feeling like a larger gun than it is. And that's because this trigger reach, they kept it long. They kept it big enough for people with larger hands to feel like they weren't pinching a tiny gun. That's a complaint that people might have with, with something like a car pistol where the, the grip gets so thin and it makes the trigger reach so small that you're just squeezing a little tiny thing between your fingers. So this keeps that a little bit bigger to let that finger get out there a little bit further. And that's, that's going to be really good for a lot of people. And that's part of why it's so popular. The, the grip itself, it's very narrow and that makes for good concealed carry. Um, the, the flip side of that is even though I say that the grip feels like a larger gun in hand because of the trigger reach, it does, because of the way it tapers to this narrow back, it does feel very narrow. It feels concentrated right in the, in the ball of my thumb there. And that's not the most comfortable of all the single stacks, but I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable. It just feels a little awkward compared to something like the M&P Compact. 
Moving on to some of the other aspects of this firearm, we've got the stainless steel slide with an armor knight finish. That's a nitrocarburizing process, tenifer, melanite, all the same stuff. Um, it does have these wonderful scallop serrations. Those give you a really good purchase on the firearm when you're racking the slide, and you're going to need that in any small 9mm. They have those really tight recoil springs. It does have these three dot sights. We're looking at the night sights version here. We've got night sights on the front and rear, but on the regular version, they would look just about the same. They're still steel dovetailed sights, front and rear, adjustable both for windage. And they're really excellent. They really maximize the length of that slide, as the M&Ps always do. And I, I really do like these sights a lot. It seems like they've perfected the ratio of, of uh, open space to that front sight. It gives you a really, really good sight picture. Uh, it's, it's a notable sight picture on these uh, M&Ps, on all of them. The slide release is excellent. Shoots those mags out. And does that for the extended mag as well. And this extended mag is something we could take a look at. It fits very well with the grip of the firearm. And that's something that I like to pay attention to, is how well does an extended grip on a compact firearm mate with the grip that it's made for. And here, it just seems like it's part of the gun. It's really an extension of the firearm already. And that'll bump your capacity up to 8 plus 1 in this small framed 9mm. Let's take this gun apart. You really have to slide this way back to get that slide stop up into that notch, I noticed. It feels like you have to go as far as you would think that you were going to go, and then just a little bit farther. There we go. Same, same breakdown process as always, and a lot of the same internals. You've got that same trigger bar, that same sear, the same steel chassis, steel, steel tabs on the front and the rear. Good amount, good size here on the front and rear compared to some other options. Um, not as long of a slide rail as something like the PPS or, or on the steel framed cars, but definitely steel front and rear, which is, which is good to have. We've got some steel in here supporting the barrel as well. There's no rail on this single stack 9mm. However, I don't really advocate having a rail on a small single stack carry gun anyway because it just makes the front of it a little bit bulkier and I'm not going to carry a light or a laser on the front of my gun if it's tucked in my waistband. Um, taking a look at the slide and the recoil spring assembly. It's a dual captive recoil spring with a steel guide rod and it's got that flat style spring that I really like. And here's the barrel, just a standard barrel. It's a stainless steel barrel and it is exactly as you might expect. This barrel is 3.1 inches long. Looking at the slide, it's essentially just a narrowed down version of the M&P slide. Got your striker, got your striker block safety. And that's it. It's got an external extractor. It has functioned flawlessly, just like all the M&P pistols I've used. Um, the gun, it's a very reliable firearm. It feeds just about everything I'm going to feed it and functions without a hiccup. Really good little firearm, highly reliable, and this is why people love it. It's comfortable. The fit and finish is excellent. You don't see any of those, those stray tooling marks. You see no stray polymer flaking off. Everything is put together well, and it is manufactured with a, a level of professionalism. Uh, you have the top here of the chamber with a port, a little viewport, to see that your chamber is occupied by a round. That's a loaded chamber viewport for you. It's obviously, it's not tactile, and you can't really tell by feeling the extractor either, but you can see visually into there. We really like this Smith & Wesson M&P shield, especially in 9mm and especially with these night sights because they, they function well in the day and they function well in the dark. So this M&P shield is a gun that we would certainly recommend. Um, it's small enough to conceal in 
all weather and just about all styles of dress, but it feels large enough to manage and it's got just enough size and just enough sight radius, just enough of the large gun feel to it to be a proficient fighting weapon. So they say small enough to carry, big enough to fight with. And that's that's kind of what the M&P shield is. It occupies what I think is the ideal carry size, the ideal size for a carry gun. So now a gun that people are intimately familiar with is a Glock 19, and people are going to wonder, how does this compare to something like that? Uh, I don't actually have a Glock 19 on hand, because I'm, I'm not a Glock shooter, but I can tell you I know the dimensions. This is four and a half inches tall. So the Glock is going to be about a half inch longer in the grip, because it's 4.99 inches, and this is 6.1 inches long, so the Glock is going to be about another inch and a, and a two-tenths longer here. So that's what you're looking at in the Glock, there and there. And we have something that's similar. This isn't quite as long in the muzzle as a Glock 19, but it is about the same height in, in the grip. This is a TriStar C100, and it's essentially the same as a CZ Compact. So here you would, you're looking at that same half inch that I was talking about and a little bit less than the inch that I was talking about in the muzzle. But just for comparison purposes, you're looking at a really narrow firearm and a standard size double stack. Well, yeah, that's the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield, highly recommended by us here at PGR and most of the gun community. I would say if this one interests you, there's no reason to hesitate in picking it up. And the fact that it does give you that seventh round for the size, whereas some others will only give you six, i.e. the Glock 43 gives you six rounds. Even the Car CM9, which I'm a big fan of, it's a little bit shorter, which is a benefit, um, but you lose a round for that. So there's a trade-off. You get a little bit longer in the grip, you get one more round. You go a little bit shorter, you lose a round. But this one is a really good medium between the ultra-tiny the pocket pistol, and the, the standard subcompact. That's the M&P shield. The MSRP on these guns is about $449, and that's for the standard shield with or without the safety. This is the version without the safety, which I would prefer. Um, or $549 for the night sights version. Now, the standard version comes with two mags, the flat base plate and the extended, and the Night Sights version comes with a third magazine. So for that extra hundred dollars, you're getting Night Sights and an additional magazine. And that may very well be worth it if you could save that extra hundred bucks up before you go out and purchase this gun. Because Night Sights are always going to help you. And a third mag, can't go wrong with an extra mag. So, that's the M&P Shield. I'm Ed from Precision Gun Reviews. Thanks for watching. If you like our videos, please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can get all of our videos as they come out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay safe.